Nicole from Crabtree Hall. Well, last weekend I went down to Albany, Oregon to the uh, symposium down there. It was the first annual. Uh, I was pretty impressed. Those people down there in the wood turning club did a really good job of putting that thing together. They had a lot of uh, really good demonstrators and uh, uh, just uh, it was just a nice show. Uh, couldn't uh, I couldn't find anything to pick it apart, so I guess it's just fine. No, I enjoyed myself. Um, I did not have my own booth down there. That could have that could have been some of it. Um, I went uh, tagged along with. Uh, Craig from uh, Chefware Kits, and uh, so I had the opportunity to be in the same booth with him and his son Anthony and Carl Jacobson and, and wife Robin, and so we had a good time together. Um, people came by and said hi and looked at our demonstrations and things like this. So that leads me up to why I'm standing here in front of you right now. Um, what I've been experiencing the past couple months, it seems, from people is the use of the Halloween King tool. Uh, you know, the, just how to how to hold it, where to stand, and all of this stuff. And you know, what do you do with this uh, when you're setting up the uh, uh, steady rest? And uh, how do you go about all of this stuff? So it's it's easy to forget that I've been doing this for a while and, and people that are just starting out on hollow, hollowing and, and things like that or, or brand new people on, on the, a wood turning uh, hobby. So it's easy for me to you know just think okay this is the way it's done it, it's a you know comes second nature it's like you know uh, there's a lot of things that come second nature after you do them for a while. So anyway, I, I don't want to get to a point of being that way. I, I want to uh, recognize people when they are uh, hung up on something, no matter what it is. The biggest questions are, what size tool do I start off with? And then, how do I hold this thing? You know, what, what, how do you go about it? What, what do you do with it? Uh, then it's uh, questions about the blade and the steady rest and how to do those. So I'm going to try to quickly go through all these things, quickly but thoroughly go through them, and see if I can't help some people out. Uh, more and more people are buying multiple tools, not because the first one doesn't do its job real well, it's just because they want to do something bigger or something smaller, uh, something a little more complicated, things like that. So. Uh, that'll be, you know, other videos too. But for right now, uh, let's talk about a tool, okay? I have the HK58 here, uh, probably the most popular tool. I think it's probably the most popular tool because uh, it's the largest tool that'll fit on a mini lathe or a midi lathe. Uh, as far as uh, I think the banjo goes. So we don't want to put a big tool like the HK100 to 75 on a little tiny banjo. Uh, you know, have a 14 inch tool rest of which those uh, require opposed to a 12 inch tool rest that this requires. So uh, the more cantilever you get out there, the more stress you put on it, the more apt you're to tear up that banjo. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to tear up anybody's equipment. So I haven't heard of anything happening. I, I have broken banjos myself using other tools and that kind of you know alerted me to uh, you know, what I should do here. So the HK38, 50, and 58 they can be used with a, a, a 12 inch banjo and so when you get into the, the 75 and the 100 though you do need a 14 inch just because of the width between uh, the shaft here and the outrigger. Uh, if you go along and this slides off the end here uh, your tool is going to go like this it's going to hit you up here and your heart's going to be faster 
okay, but no consequence. Anyway, and if it slides off the other way, then it, then the piece itself just takes it around and puts it back up on the, the tool rest for you. So anyway, we want to we want to uh, talk about how to hold the tool. Holding the tool is absolutely vital on on turning out a nice piece. Okay. So you, you don't want to just be lackadaisy and hold it any which way. There, and there's a few ways that people hold it that they shouldn't just because. If you hold it out here like this, say, that's on the tool rest, and, and something happens like this does come over, then you can get your fingers pinched, okay? The other thing is, is it's just, if you hold your hand, your left hand on it like this, you have a lot better control, you can move it where you want to, and there's not a consequence if something happens, no pinch fingers or anything like that, all right? And that's what we strive for, it's nothing pinched. So then the, the right hand, uh, you hold it here, and I like to put my elbow here. That's where I have it most of the time. So I, I have you know, I can go back and forth, up and down here, however, uh, I, uh, that's how I like to hold it because it's the safest way to do it, okay? Now, the other thing that I like to do is my stand. I like my feet to be about shoulder width apart. I like to even have a little bit of spring in my knees. To when I'm working with this and that's so I can go around with the tool so I you know it, it's like archers uh, the first thing that I was taught when I took up archery was to become part of the system of the shooting apparatus to launch it it's like a fighter pilot he's he's part of that weapon tree and and so this is this is a tool that you need to be a part of uh, you need to listen to the sound of it. You need to feel how it how it feels when you're going in there and, and cleaning out. You you need to listen to what the tool has to say to you, and and it, you need to feel what the 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 tool is telling you through the feel of it. It is uh, remarkable how much now I rely on this tool to tell me what I'm doing right or wrong, okay? It, it is, it, I can't even tell you enough that uh, what this tool talks to me about now, which I know sounds a little eerie and everything and sounds like a promo, but it's not. And uh, the, uh, this is a, a dandy tool if you listen to it. So, feet apart hand here, hand here, elbow, and you, then you can move around. Also, on a bigger piece, and I have an adjustable or a sliding headstock on my 1642 jet, which I really like. So let's come over here, and then when I'm, when I'm on a big piece, I even want to have my body up against uh, the end of the lathe and I can adjust the headstock to the length that I want okay so I don't have to bend way over or stand back a ways I want to be as comfortable as I can get so the tool can be set up the best it can be set up to do its job so the name of the game is confidence, confidence, confidence. Follow what the tool wants you to do and you'll do good.